So we're going to talk about the beech nut apple juice uh, ethical dilemma. Uh, some background about beech nut. So beech nut, uh, they're actually the second largest producer of baby food in the nation, um, second behind Gerber. Uh, and their reputation is really based on having pure, wholesome, natural foods for your child. Um, Quite a few years ago, about 47 years ago, in 1977, uh, Beech Nut was purchased by a new company and during that time, it was struggling financially. So the uh, financial, uh, the leadership uh, of the organization was looking for ways to cut costs and they found a new supplier of the apple juice, which was actually 30% of their sales market. So they found a company called Interjuice, um, which they were able to provide the apple juice concentrate for 20 to 25 percent less cost um, saving the company around a quarter million dollars a year um, which is pretty significant for their sales uh, by 1978 though the director of research and development uh, Lakari began investigating the rumors of possible impure apple juice being supplied um, so at that time though, there really wasn't a way and there wasn't really the technical ability to truly test uh, a product and apple juice for its, its compounds and its products. Uh, but there was some technology and some ability to do some testing. Um, and so the research and development director went ahead and, um, and, and started looking into those rumors. Uh, in 1978, he did go and do uh, a tour of the manufacturing company, and that was in Israel. However, with that, he wasn't really able to actually fully inspect the whole processing plant. He was not given um, full access, uh, which obviously raised some flags for him and reported back to his leadership saying that really he didn't feel that, um, that the company Beach Nut should really be trusting Interjuice. Uh, as the impure concentrate became more well known within the leadership, however, they decided the leadership continued to just keep uh, sticking with the with the company and going with the concentrate, um, and really not digging deep into the problem or looking for any solutions at that time. Um, and they really just had uh, just such a large volume of stock, um, back stock of this really just basic sugar water um, and they really didn't want to lose all that money in product so they continued to sell it they also shipped it across state lines from New York to New Jersey and then eventually to the uh, to Puerto Rico Dominican Republic uh, Virgin Islands and such so they were still exporting it out and selling it um, and, and trying to make a profit even though it was really coming to the attention of the leadership for the company that it was not apple juice, that it was basically just beet, uh, beet juice and, um, and uh, corn syrup, essentially. So just straight up sugar water. So really the ethical dilemma of that all is that you have one of the most trusted uh, companies in baby food makers who un unknowingly to parents, they are being sold just pure sugar water, that it's really not apple juice, it's not uh, pure, it's not natural, it's, it's just made up of all sorts of chemicals essentially. And while there may not be any foreseeable health concerns, uh, it's not like, uh, like the Tylenol um, tampering and that it could cause severe death or something along those lines, that's not necessarily the case. But we really, you know, and especially back in the late 70s, early 80s, you really just didn't know what the consequences could be of just providing our most vulnerable citizens, our infants, our children, uh, sugar and chemicals. So um, really, that's the dilemma. You have an organization that's based off of having a, a good reputation for pure products for infants and they're really not fulfilling that reputation and that that uh, that company company motto um, and really what it came down to is that 
the CEO, the president, the leadership of the or of the company is really focused on the bottom dollar. It's about not losing profits and really just trying to um, increase sales. Fallout really is that uh, the FDA became aware of the whole scenario. Um, the research and development director had gone in and done some more research and had some memos. Uh, those were discovered. Um, and back in the day, it wasn't through emails or text or anything like that. It was literally um, you know, articles that were or memos dumped in a trash. So they are picked up. Um, FDA becomes aware of it and starts looking into it uh, and notifies the company that the product has been uh, tampered and is really just not apple juice. Uh, and as soon as the FDA identifies a contaminated batch of that juice, the company decides to destroy it, trying to mitigate any kind of legal action against them and hoping that there's no publicity, which honestly, that's just not going to be the case. Um, so they issue a recall and just working on uh, just making sure that they're selling that pure apple juice still and hoping that this all will just blow over. So the question is, you know, what should we say? What should we do? The suit against the inner juice may draw a lot of attention. Um, and as a PR professional, what are we supposed to do? Um, and honestly, you know, what we should be doing as a PR professional advising the company leadership is that you just need to come clean. You need to, to say, yes, there was a problem. There's a mistake. We did this and we own the problem and we apologize. The CEO should absolutely res resign as well as anyone else that was involved um, from the leadership aspect of it. Uh, if there's a board of directors for this, they should be asking the CEO to resign as well as any of the other leadership who are involved in this cover up. And an apology absolutely needs to be given to parents because quite honestly, you've lost complete trust uh, with the parents. Parents are not gonna wanna buy your product. They're not gonna believe in your product because how can they? Um, it's an emotional thing. Well, my child may not be harmed. Uh, it's still an emotional uh, and just a, a very heartfelt problem as a parent that you want to put trust in somebody that you're feeding your child something that it needs to be what it says what you say it is and that really I would also recommend that you need to be as transparent as possible during the entire legal mitigation process just being upfront and honest about it so what really happened is that um, according to one of the New York Times articles that I found online dating back to 1987 is that uh, the Beech Nut Corporation ended up having to uh, they were charged and there were uh, federal indictments against the company. Um, so the company pled guilty to the charges um, for selling the fake apple juice essentially and they paid a $2 million fine as well as having to pay $140,000 in investigation costs to the FDA, which at that time was really one of the largest um, fines ever having to pay. Um, since the uh, the Food and Drug and Cosmetic Act was passed in 1937. So um, really what it came down to was that those acts, those deceitful acts um, from 81 to 83, that's what they got charged for. And that's all I have.